Am I late? What are you talking about? Well, I've never seen you around this time in morning. Couldn't you sleep or some it? Ernie! Eh? Come here. If I thought you were being cheeky, something nasty might happen to your yoghurt. <laughs> I haven't got any with me this morning. Well, think yourself. Look at them. I'm up early because I'm going fishing. If you'd use your eyes, you'd see that I was a fisherman. A coarse fisherman. <laughs> coarse, yes. Fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> Bunny. <laughs> Douglas. <laughs> well, I'm not getting up and making the tea. It's not my turn. I did it yesterday. And I did it the day after that. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Jack! <laughs> hey, it's not there. He must have known it was his turn to make the tea. <laughs> well, let's have a new roacher then. All those in favour of Douglas doing it, say aye. Aye. Ah, oh, leave me alone. I'm dreaming. I'm on this desert island with Julie Egg. Edge, Clothiers. It's Julie Edge. Sure up. Anyway, I rescued her from this sinking ship. She was so grateful, she said she'd do anything for me. So what did you do? Well, I laid my coat down. She laid her coat down. Go on. Go on. What happened then? We played football. <laughs> No! Oh, you're gone, the yeah. She was Come in the on. between Get the out. two. Get out! Yes. Come on, yeah. here. Good you? morning. <laughs> Giving your brother a nice massage and getting yourselves in trim ready to get me my morning cup of tea. It's Douglas's turn, turn ma'am. I don't care whose turn it is. Get me the tea. <laughs> Quarter to eleven and exhausted already. Julie, Julie. Douglas, love, get up before you get the flat of my hand. Edge, edge. If you prefer it, then, edge. <laughs> Ow, ma'am, get, get off. Stop it, you'll come out in bruises, ma'am. Uh, Stop it. Oh, do I hear tea? Hmm. Well, where is it, then? Oh, give us a chance, ma'am. I'll put the kettle on, ma'am. Honestly, I have had time to get up, get dressed, put me makeup on, and assault Douglas since that alarm went off. Are you growing the tea and knitting the tea bags? And where's Jack? He's gone. Has he really? Not for good. His toothbrush is still in the kitchen. Uh, are his teeth still in the glass? Yeah. Oh. Is my breakfast ready yet? Oh, how pleasant to hear that you are in good appetite, Raymond. And how unfortunate that your mother has decided to let her lazy, idle, good-for-nothing layabout sons get their own breakfast today. I said she'd be upset if she didn't get a tea. No. Is me breakfast ready yet, ma'am? <laughs> Who did that? Me, Julie Edge's grandma. Now get yourself in that kitchen and cook some breakfast for your starving brothers and me. I can't cook, ma'am. Don't they teach you anything on television these days? I'll have a scrambled egg on toast. Ma'am, you know I can't cook. Hello, oh, ma'am. Here's the tea. Oh, thank you, Bunny. And what would you like for your breakfast today? Oh, since you ask, I'll have uh, sausage, tomato, bacon, two eggs and chips. Oh. I can't do it. You'll be very pleased to hear that your brother has volunteered his services as cook today. Oh, well, in that case, I'll have cornflakes and I'll pour the milk myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I'll have cheese on toast. Yes. Well... This tea is delicious, Bunny. Thank you, ma'am. You can make it every morning in future. All right, then. Who's had it? Douglas hasn't, for one. <laughs> now, then. Who has had what, Raymond? The cheese, ma'am. There's only the paper left. Look. All right. Who's been stealing? And don't give me your usual lies about the rats having had it. They've not left no visiting cards. Well, look, Jack was up before us. Yeah. Hey, up, what's this? Dear all, hope you won't be needing the bread and cheese. I've gone fishing. We'll be back with a big one for lunch. Jack. 
Him fishing? Yeah, he's got all the tackle, ma'am. It's underneath his bed alongside with the scrap metal. <laughs> I thought you must be flogging it. No, he's decided he's overweight. That's what it is. The exercise will get the beer off. Oh. Look, you don't need exercise. You don't get it sitting by the river all day. He gets plenty of exercise anyway, does Jack, walking down the betting shop every afternoon. Hey, ma'am. Yes, my love. Well, he can't have gone catching fish. How do you work that out, Douglas? Well, fish don't go for cheese. Anybody knows that. <laughs> He's gone catching mice. That's right, love. And he's coming home with a big one for lunch. Uh, can I have the wishbone? <laughs> hey, come on, come on. Douglas, go let him in. And don't forget, not a word. That's right, Mum. <laughs> yes? <laughs> what do you mean, yes? It's me, Jack. I thought you'd gone fishing. Well, I'm back, aren't I, you fathead? It was, Jack. I recognised him in a flash. Hello, <laughs> oh, no, love. Back so soon. Of course. When you're a fisherman in my class, you don't take all day, you know. Those fish know who's who. Did they come out with their hands up? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Ford, I any comments out of you and you ought to be dangling on the end of an hook. Well, how about a cuppa for the worker, then? Oh, well, all right. Uh, Raymond, come and give me a hand in the kitchen. Oh, can't you do it on your own, Raymond? Ma'am? All right, ma'am. Hey, come and have a look at this. There we are then, straight from the canal to the dinner table. That's as big as anything you can get in the shops. Bigger. <laughs> what is it? What does it look like, Douglas? Well, I don't know. I've never seen one before. It's a fish, you big wet Nelly. The fish I caught in the canal. Where's its fingers? <laughs> Where my boot will be if you keep asking stupid questions. Hey, you wait until Queenie sees this. Hey, Queenie? Yes, love? Uh, you know that note I left? Yes, love. Well, you remember the bit that said, uh, we'll see you later with a big one for lunch? Yes, love. Well, how about that, then? nearly as big as the one we've got. <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> well, that 
was a lovely bit of fish, even though I do say so myself. I went to a lot of trouble to get that. You went to a lot of trouble? What about me? I mean, I'm sat there in the shivering cold. I didn't have any breakfast. I was up too early for that one, I. Then I'm struggling with that great fish, or there's something nice for your lunch, and then you don't even cook the flaming thing. Well, I call that gratitude. Hey, he's right, Mum. I mean, it took a real expert to catch a fish like that. Thank you, Bunny. Yeah, it's not every day you pull a conger eel from a canal, is it, Jack? He's right, you know. Expert. Yeah, of course he's right. Uh, shall I tell him, Mum, or would you like to have the pleasure? You carry on, Bunny. You're doing just fine. Tell me. Tell me what? Well, you see, Jack, a conger eel doesn't live in the canal. It lives in the sea. Hey? It could have swam down from Blackpool. <laughs> of course it could. Oh, yes, come back early off its holidays, I suppose. Oh, come on, Jack. You know you didn't catch that fish. I did catch it. I did. Don't you listen to Four Eyes there. What's he know about fishing anyway? I saw you come out of the fish shop with it. You did what? <laughs> he saw you buy it. Don't you butt in big. I don't want to wrap my fishing rod around your neck. Yeah? You and who's army? All right, you two. Pack it in. Now then, Jack, either you're telling lies or Bunny is. Mum, I saw him. Well, now, quiet. The only way we're going to sort this thing out is for Jack to catch another fish in front of witnesses. No, no, I'm not doing that. Well, that seems fair to me, Mum. Yes, Jack? Look, I've already proved myself once, haven't I? Not to us, you haven't. And we'll give you one hour to catch it in. An hour? God, that's stupid, that is. I mean, it takes them half an hour to get attracted to the bait. Anyway, they go to sleep in the afternoons. <laughs> Well, then, in that case, you'll have to wake them up again, won't you? And you'll still have half an hour left. Agreed? Go on, Jack. Oh, all right, then. Good. Well, that's settled, then. Oh, and there's just one thing I did forget to mention. If you don't catch a fish, then it's going to cost you money. How much? Ten quid. Ten? Well, what happens if I do catch a fish, eh? In the unlikely event of that happening, we'll pay you ten quid. Right, you're on. I'll go and get me maggots. <laughs> hey, Mum, I haven't got any money. Neither have I. Don't look at me. Exactly as I thought. Now then, we can do with that ten quid, can't we? Yeah, but what happens if he does catch a fish, Mum? We've got to pay him ten quid, which we haven't got. Well, then, in that case, we're right back where we started, aren't we? Anyway, don't worry. He's not going to catch a fish. Right. I'm ready. All right, then uh, where's Douglas? Here I am, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> it's Captain Birdseye. <laughs> Where the hell do you think you're going dressed like that? We're going fishing, aren't we? Well, this is me fisherman's uniform. You're not coming just like that. You frighten the fish away with that lot on. You can't frighten away something that isn't there in the first place. All right, Queenie. We'll see. We'll see. Here we are. Come on, Jack. Out you get. Where you're going to lose ten quid. I'll take this then. Come on, go! Give us out, will you? Right, get me run. We'll picnic over here. Right, Mum. Come on, Doctor. Come on, run, you get. Come on, shake. Right, well, I think this is a suitable spot, Douglas. Shh! The fact the fish. Here. Here. I'm on your side, really. Thank you, Douglas. Hey, what's this for? Floats. What? Floats! <laughs> oh, yeah! What are you doing that for? I was testing it. <laughs> you silly clog, big tackles in there. Get it out, will you? Hey, Bunny! Yeah. Give us hand with this, will you? Come on, come on, shake yourself. <laughs> right, you can let go now. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, you silly fatty! 
Get that box out of there. I wish you'd make up your mind. Mm. Cup of tea, Douglas. Oh, thanks, Alfred. <laughs> Queenie, get these lunatics out of there, will you? Go on, shove up! Shove up! Get on with it and stop moaning. I've never kicked anything like this. He's aerated. <laughs> He's only moaning him. What's the matter with him? The same, don't you? Huh? Get home. Boys? You little beauty, come here. You won me. Ten quid, you have. Ten quid, you were a monster, but I got you, dear. You make your match with me. Oh. Hey. Hey, where are you going? We're going home. What about me? Oh. Why, you lazy shit! <laughs> It's no good. We'll have to pay him. A bet is a bet, and he won it fair and square. And never let it be said that Queenie Shepherd did not honour her debts. Get off. Ooh. But we still haven't got any money, ma'am. Well, then we'll have to find some from somewhere, won't we? A bet is a bet. Now then, there's that crate of empty lemonade bottles in the hall, left over from Douglas's stag night. Uh, see what you can go raise on them. All right, ma'am. Bunny. When did you last do that trick with the gas meter? Uh, about a couple of months ago, ma'am. Well, go and do it again. There must be a couple of quid in there. Right. Douglas, love, do you remember that job you once had? Not really, ma'am. Well, I do. It was loading boxes into that warehouse. Mm, it was hard work, that. Oh, I know it was, love. But I also remember that you used to save up one pound a week, didn't you? Right. Well, by my reckoning, you should have two pounds. I lasted two weeks. Two pounds. You're right, ma'am. Yes, well, go and get it then. All right. Where are you? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Hello, Jack. Did you swim back? <laughs> a fellow angler saw me struggling with my catch and very kindly gave me a lift. Oh. What was his name? Moby Dick. <laughs> ah! oh, I'm sorry, Jack, but I mean, you didn't expect us to give you a lift home and a tenner, did you? Well, I'm glad you mentioned the tenner, Queenie. I'll have it now, please. You'll have it when I'm good and ready to give it to you. Now, go and get yourself dry cleaned and we'll see you down at the builders. Squelch, squelch. <laughs> Ninety-eight and a half, ninety-nine, ninety-nine and a half, hundred. That's your tenner. Thank you very much. I will now buy a round. Oh, oh hello, Jack. Jack. On one condition. What's that, love? I want an apology. An apology from me? Not from you, Queenie. From him. Bunny, apologise to your Uncle Jack. But, Mum, never mind that. Go on. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. Hi, <laughs> Bunny Shepherd. Hi, Bunny Shepherd. Apologise profusely. Apologise what? Profusely. <laughs> Profusely. For opening my big mouth. <laughs> For opening my big mouth. And saying that my nice Uncle Jack never caught a fish. 
and saying that my nice Uncle Jack never caught a fish when I know all the time that he did. That's not true. Never mind whether it's true or not. Get on with it. When all the time I know he did. And that I will never again question the word of Jack Shepherd, for I know him to be an honest man. Oh, ma'am. Oh, go on. I'm thirsty. <laughs> when all the time I know him to be an honest man. Right. Honour is satisfied. Yeah. What are you having? I oh. shall start with a small gin and tonic, and tonic? followed by a large one. Hello, hey, you, hey, you Jack Shepherd, alias John Sheepfoot, alias James Shergold, alias Jack Duncan. Come off it, Arthur. You know very well I am. Aye. Well, I have reason to believe that one of you may be able to help me in my inquiries concerning stolen articles. Stolen articles such as what? Fishing tackle. Fishing tackle? Me? Oh, no. Yeah, it's a 12-foot fiberglass rod with brown and yellow taping at the ferrules and all the matching equipment. It's underneath his bed. Bloody <laughs> shepherd! <laughs> I never thought I'd live to see the day that you'd squeal on your own family. Well, I was getting me own back for all those daft things he made me say. Oh. Grasset. Aye, it sounds like the one we have a description of. And may I ask how you came into possession of this rod? You may very well ask. Um, yes, I was at the pictures. And this man sat next to me and said, would you mind holding my rod? You know, I find that very hard to believe. Well, you can ask the girl with the ice cream tray. She fell over it twice. <laughs> can you give me a description of this man? Yes, I can. He wears stupid round glasses because he's a four-eyed git. He's got fair hair and he's five foot five in height. Yeah. Why didn't you report this to the police straight away? I, I was just on my way down to this station this very moment, officer. Have you been using this tackle, then? Yeah. No, officer. Oh, it's a good job you didn't. Because if you're caught fishing without a permit, it could cost you ten quid. I swear, officer, I was never there. He's right, officer. He was with me all day. I can vouch for his whereabouts. I'll have to confiscate the tackle, though. Come with me, Arthur. I'll show you where it is. Right, we'll be on our way. Good night, Mrs. Oh. Shepherd. Good night. Well, I'll sweep for this. I'll kill him, I swear. I'll kill that so, little grump. Uh, you didn't go down to the canal and you didn't catch a fish then? Well, I had to say that, didn't I, Queenie? Otherwise, it'd have done me for ten quid. Yes, well, what happens if I bump into him one day and just happen to mention that you did go down to the canal and you did catch a fish? Oh, you wouldn't do that to me, Queenie, would you? Well, my lips could be sealed. With a gin and tonic. With ten quid's worth of gin and tonic. <laughs> ten quid's worth? And who's going to carry you home? You are. And I promise you it'll be the biggest catch you've ever had. <laughs> 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 <laughs>